live where we motivate the blind stimulate your mind and welcome all kind and we are going to stimulate we're going to stimulate your mind today i'm 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 sure of that uh <laughs> make sure to subscribe hit that notification bell hit it break it whatever you want to do make sure you hit that notification bell you lock it in so that you can get also make sure you hit uh, get all notifications because I don't want you to miss anything, man. Definitely. Now, I am bringing you the bangers like the youngsters say. I'm bringing you the bangers. Make sure to subscribe. Make sure to tell a friend and a friend and a friend. Who is Tony Giles? Well, I'm going to let you know. Uh, I'm, well, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. This guy has been all over the the world almost he's been to africa he's been to zimbabwe he's been to spain he's been to uh united states and visited new orleans he is a blind traveler you're going to find out some things about tony that i didn't know you didn't know and maybe tony didn't know you know what i'm saying so <laughs> all the way from england london england yeah yeah all the way from london england uh i'm going to bring you my man Tony Giles, he's going to explain to you what he does, who he is, why he does it. I'm telling you, I, I kind of like this. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't know if I ever get a chance to go to different places. I've heard about them. But to actually go and touch these particular like animals and just experience nature and everything, man, that, that's a wonderful thing considering what's going on in the world today. I know I talk a lot. I'm talking too much. What I'm going to do, I'm going to allow Tony to take over the show and tell everybody, first of all, welcome to Third Eye Vision, tell everybody what he does as a blind traveler. Go ahead on, do your thing, baby. Hi, everyone. I'm Tony, Tony Giles. A lot of people know me as Tony the Traveler. I'm totally blind and uh, severely deaf in both ears. I use uh, digital hearing aids. I'm 43 years old and I've spent the last 22 years traveling the world, basically. My goal is to try and visit every country in the world. Um, it wasn't. It wasn't when I first started. I just just went out there for fun and uh, exp escapism. And uh, back in uh, 2000, I got the chance to study in South Carolina for four months, part of an American Studies degree. And then uh, all my friends went uh, down to Florida, and I thought they're not going to let me drink and party. So I thought, let's go. I got a New Orleans by myself for a week. So I went down there, just missed Mardi Gras by one day, but the place was buzzing. And uh, I stayed in a hostel where you sort of share a room with six or say eight strangers and that and just meet different people from different countries. And um, I've been doing it in the UK since I was sort of 15, 16. And so I was pretty confident I could do it in the States as well and could speak the language to sort of some extent. And then, um, yeah, I, I, uh, I got... Uh, the teachers in uh, where I was studying to book me a flight and flew to New Orleans and I got a taxi to the, the hostel and then basically walked in the hostel and checked in and staff showed me to my room and I met some other travellers and then basically asked, how do I get to Bourbon Street, man? They said, yeah, you walk out the hostel, you, you turn left, you walk three blocks, get a tram and you go to Bourbon. I thought, oh, great. With mm -hmm. the nightlife. And I walked down the tram, so asked someone what a tram was. They told me, went down to Bourbon and had a wild time. It, Hit some bars and had some jazz and the blues and had some gumbo and oh and yeah, gumbo, good old gumbo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Tony, uh, you you again, you are a blind traveler for those who just joined us, right? That's right. What prompted you? I know you said you know, we want to see the world, see how many uh, countries you can visit. What 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 uh, prompted you to say, well, hey, you know, uh, after I finish doing this part of my life, I want to just travel the world and, and just, you know, physically see a lot of different things. What, what prompted you to, yeah. to, to do that? Um, I didn't like, a lot, I didn't wake up one day and think I want to try the world. So it was sort of natural, really. Um, um, I went to a school when I was like a kid, five years old, a school for kids with disabilities, about 30, 20, 30 miles on my home. So that was traveling. I went there by taxi every day because there were no schools in my town that could support me. So I could, and then uh, when I was 10, I needed uh, better schooling. So I went to a boarding school for the blind about um, about 300 miles from my home. I'd stayed there for six weeks, eight weeks. So my first ambition goal was to get home and see my parents as much as possible. Older brother and older sister, not blind. So that was my first idea of travel. And then mm -hmm. once I was sort of got mobility training and could catch buses and trains home, um, I got the opportunity to go to the Boston in the States with the school when I was 16 and that was so different. People spoke with funny different accents and the streets were obviously wider. I could sense the space, obviously. 
Mm. Uh, and everything was different. Food was different. I, I want more than this. Because in England, people are nice, they're helpful, but they're very quiet. They don't really want to engage with disabled people. They don't really want to ask questions because they're worried about they worry about offending you. Whereas in the states, people ask me, "Are you blind?" And they just want to. They just ask you more. They talk more. Mm. Um, so I noticed that it's a real different attitude and a different. So I wanted more about that. So I went back, and then when I got to study there, that gave me the freedom to. Um, you know, being down in the south, experience a totally unique culture. Eating grits three times a day, and, mm. <laughs> and then I went. I want more than this. I want to, you know, broaden my horizons. And like a lot at first, a lot of it was about escapism. Uh, I went to Australia and New Zealand after I finished my degree, and didn't think, didn't know I was going to do next. I didn't really want to work because that didn't sound too far. I wanted to drink beer and chase girls and. <laughs> and then I, as, I, as I got older, I realized I wanted to travel and actually experience the cultures and meet the real people and find out how they live in, in countries that don't have, um, you know, the luxuries that we do have in the US and, and, and the UK. I wanted to see how the real people live with no money and no running water. And that's, that's what I did. And that's, that's very what I did. And this is what we're going to do. We're going to take a break and we're going to play a video that you, that I that I found that was that you you know allowed me to use. Uh -huh. and, we're, and we're going to come back and talk about the exciting places in which you visited. And maybe hope, hopefully you can hear you can uh, uh you know talk about what this video was all about after it's over. We're speaking with Tony Giles, who is a blind traveler who's been oh who's been in a lot of places. Um, <laughs> so check out this video and we'll be back on the other side. Hold on. Would you believe me if I tell you that you don't need these eyes to see this beautiful world? Tony, walking in the streets of England, now waving his hand at the camera. Seeing a slice of Southern Africa my way by Tony Giles, blind world traveler and author. This is the third book in Seeing the World trilogy, following Seeing the World My Way and Seeing the America My Way. Starting South Africa and finishing in Malawi, this is a story of adventure by people he meets and adventure he has. Almost drowning while water rafting in the river Zambezi and hearing lions roar at night at Eswatini. It is a journey of continued self-discovery for the author as he plots his way from multicultural South Africa with its complex society to Malawi with its picturesque and peaceful nature. It offers a unique insight into traveling in Southern Africa from a blind person's perspective. Tony in a food shop, sniffing a sack of food stuff. Check it out, now available on Amazon and Apple. Learn more about Tony on his website, www.tonythetraveler.com. Okay, that was you, right? Yeah, man. Tell us about that. So yeah, it's about a book I published. Uh, the trip I did uh, at the end of two thousand four or five. I've been traveling for about eight months in the uh, North and South America, and I thought, oh, not been to Africa. Let's go to South Africa because I knew where the main uh, city is from from listening to sport on the radio and stuff. So go and check it out and eat some weird food and hopefully touch some animals. And I actually got kissed by a giraffe in a nature park. It was kind of cool, <laughs> unexpected. And then um, I kind of uh, went off up through Mozambique and then across Zimbabwe and Zambia, which is Zimbabwe is a very poor country, a um, lot of problems, but I met some lovely people who took care of me and helped me get from place to place. And I, I touched an elephant, I rode an elephant, um, and I went up to the big uh, Victoria Falls and obviously I could hear the water and I got wet several times. And that was pretty amazing. Mm. Biggest waterfall in the world. And then crossed the famous bridge into Zambia and, I uh, went whitewater rafting, which ne I got nearly drowned. But mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> just, okay. Yeah, just stuff that, and just met local people, really. And I went on safaris, and I went horse riding, and I lived, uh, stayed in the mountains in a small country called Lesotho, which is uh, basically this mountain in the middle of South Africa. And I learned how people walk two miles every morning to collect water. The women wow. carry it back on their heads, and they've got no taps. They've got no way of getting water, so... And that really opened my eyes, as I say, you know, and this is how people live. Right. It made I'm, I'm, me more humble, hopefully. Right. I'm quite sure it did. Um, you also, I, I've, I've checked out a couple of your uh, your uh, 
your videos on your channel, Tony Giles. <laughs> you, uh, you, you, uh, you experienced, yes, you had an experience with a rhinoceros, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're walking with rhinoceros. <laughs> now, now, I'm I'm totally blind. I decided one day I wasn't able to see if because if you were if you actually had a chance to touch it or you were. Or, you know, I couldn't really touch. I didn't have it let me to touch them. I, I got about about ten feet from them because they can be aggressive if you yeah. upset them. But right. you could smell them. They, oh, they okay. did. They did make a little noise at one point. Which the video doesn't really pick it up. I could just hear it, but it's, they don't talk a lot. The elephants do. <laughs> oh yeah, I can imagine. I've ridden an uh, elephant before. Rhinos don't say much, and the lions. I heard lions at night once roaring. That was so, good. So when you that take was... these these travels, you take them by yourself, or you have someone assisting. And I, I heard. I remember you, you did say early in the videos that people yeah. uh, were willing to, to to go along with you. Um, no, so as... I, I, I generally travel by myself. Then I'll meet people along the way. Um, and some of the videos I take myself with my camera, little camera, and. and uh, like when I did the rhino thing, obviously I had to have a guide because it's what you're in the wild with animals. And right, right. They, they took the videos and then um, the local African guy I stayed with in Livingston, he came with me. Um, I managed to get him him for free and so and then he took some videos and stuff. And I just sort of sent, you know, checked out the air and smelt it and breathed it all and tried to get close to a rhino. <laughs> so are you planning on tape, taking any more uh, uh, safaris, any, any more trips uh, later on in life? Oh yeah, I want to. I want to continue traveling until I visit every country, and then uh, do it again with my girlfriend. She she travels sometimes with me. She's mm -hmm. also blind. Oh, okay. So she she pursues sort of um, you know, more relaxed trips, kind of um, relationship trip. You know, staying in hotels and stuff. Right, right. But, I like uh, I like the fact that you are doing this uh, as a blind person, and it shows your independence because uh, there are a lot a lot of visually impaired in individuals who are afraid to travel five steps out of the house houses you know what i'm saying because they feel that they you know they yeah. because they can't see they can't do it and you are a great inspiration to me yeah. as well as other people you know what what what, what is it in, what's in you to to, to say well, look i just want to do this even though i'm blind there's nothing gonna stop me i'm independent and i'm just gonna go on because that takes a, well, a lot to do well i've been blind all my life so i've never known anything different mm -hmm. um and to me the bigger problem has always been my hearing because i can't lip read or sign so for me, in social situations, that's been more difficult than being blind. Mm. Once I'm blind, nothing can change, so I get on with it. Um, I guess it's because I've had um, my family have been open-minded. I lived in a street one way, so I knew which traffic was coming. So I played around with a soccer ball, and you know, and then I went to a boarding school. Of course, it was all everyone was blind or at some sight, and we all fought. And we so I was, I got that confidence, I suppose, very early on, and then um, I. My parents said, you'll do things. They didn't treat me any, any differently to my older brother and sister. So that was just that, the, you know, their brother. And I was blind, okay, but they treated me as a, you know, just a normal person. That's what I like. And that's, yeah. That, yeah, you just go and meet people. And I always think, I just have a go. Just try it, even if it's just going out your front door and just to the next door neighbor and go and say hello. Just try it. Then you'll find if you like something or don't like something. Until you try something, you don't know if you can do it, do you? And then That's a great you try point. it, you like it, I can do this. You try it again, do it a bit more, and you get more confidence. And and I think the other thing I learned early on, early on is I couldn't see the whiteboard or the blackboard, so I had to ask. Mm -hmm. And I've had to ask all my life, and I suppose I've not been afraid to ask for help because I've got to if I want to do anything. That's right. I like and I that. And I want to do things. I, I like it that. Doesn't, and it doesn't have to be traveling around the world doing crazy things like I can do. It just be something as simple as going to the shops or making a cup of coffee but for some people that's difficult so it's whatever their challenge is they can they can do it and have a go and just try and if you fail do it again you keep doing it and eventually you get there um, well that's coming we've all got our own level all our, our challenges haven't we this is coming from the uh the blind traveler i'm telling you he's he's, he's gone to a lot of places tony giles he has a youtube channel um Nate, just briefly name name about six or seven of places that you that you've been uh been through and, and, and of all those places you, you name what is the most uh uh re rewarding experience that you've seen uh, uh in traveling to these different uh, countries so first of all name the um, place to... i'd say new zealand's my favorite country i could live there i think mm -hmm. it reminds me of england the weather's similar it's pretty cold and rains and you can do lots of bungee jumping if you want or you can just hang out and drink wine or mm -hmm. yeah it's got a lot of diversity in new zealand so um, Spain and Turkey, very friendly people. 
again, lots of history, which I'm interested in, lots of nature as well, some big parks in Spain and Turkey, got hot baths and get massage and oh, yes. um, drink, drink tea all day, little shots of tea. And yeah, Turkey's lovely. I've been to Turkey four times. Mm. And then where else? Um, New York, I would say New York City, Manhattan, it's probably the easiest city to walk around if you're blind because mm-hmm. it's just on a grid. You just walk in straight lines and just mm. ask, are you on east side, west side? What number street am I on? I'm glad you um, pointed that out. How, yeah, how easy. Just, yeah, just get on your cane and then you get on the subway. Of course, you never be going uptown or downtown because it announces the stops. Mm-hmm. Um, a bit like the uh, subway in, in, in London. So, um, yeah, over the main countries, I suppose. Um, I like Argentina as well, good meat. Um, yeah, and some amazing waterfalls. And I suppose my favourite country in Africa would be Senegal, would be up there, and uh, and Zambia. Wow. Friendly people, good me, good yeah, and so, Gambia. And 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 of all these places, what was the most rewarding experience? Like, man, I didn't know this that you that you you had read about, and you went to this particular yeah. country. You found out what did you? What just name? just just staying with local people and sharing their culture and their customs. I remember I um. A guy cooked me a meal in Ethiopia, and then we shared the meal, and we fed each other. So what you do, you, it's this kind of, I don't know how to describe it. It's like a massive um, web of kind of pastry stuff. Mm-hmm. And then you put meat and spices on that, mm-hmm. and then you sort of pull it apart, a bit like piece of, piece of pizza, pizza bread, but softer, and mm-hmm. you roll it up, and then you feed each other. And that's got to be like one of the most amazing, you know, you've, someone feeding you because they like you. Right, right. Well. the that closeness. Was, that you, yeah, the closeness yeah. and the yeah. intimacy, and right, you know, two strangers becoming friends over food. Which is great, crazy. and that's usually the case and whatnot, man. Hey, yeah. I am. I mean, I, I I could talk to you for days, and uh, and I'm quite sure my <laughs> audience has has enjoyed the story as well. Uh, this is Tony Giles, who's a blind travel. Again, you can check him out on his, on his YouTube cha- channel by the same name. That's uh, G I L E S Tony from uh, England who has been uh, traveling for 20 something years, right? Yeah, about 22, 23 years, yeah, and, on and, and off. And hopefully with God willing, you'll be able to do another 20 plus years going to, yeah. going to various places. Well, um, before I conclude, tell everybody uh, where they can find you, your website, and uh, I'll, I'll get the uh, yeah. name, put them in the description and, and the name of your book. Yeah, so I'm on, I'm on Facebook, Tony, T-O-N-Y, sorry, Tony, T-O-N-Y space, T-H-E space, T R A V E L L E R, because we're traveler with two L's in England. And then my website is tonythetraveler.com. And I'm on YouTube as well as uh, Tony Giles. And yeah, people can search me that. So Giles, G I L E S. Okay. And uh, yeah, right, check me well, out. That will definitely go support him. And I'm glad to have you on here. One of these days, uh, if you're traveling, I'll do a video and send it in and I'll put it out, you know, let everybody know. Uh, well, y- y'all can go to the YouTube channel and check it out anyway. But yeah. you-, you can see some of the, the rewarding experiences that uh, that he has uh, uh, done over the years and whatnot. Tony, mm-hmm. I am glad to have you on. you have any last minute words you want to say? Pleasure, man. Thanks for having me. No, thanks. Thanks. No, thanks for coming. Thanks for being you and uh, a visually yeah. impaired person that's that's independent, not afraid to travel. Because like I said, I definitely wouldn't mind visit, visiting these these countries because I've heard a lot about them, but never have yeah. had the opportunity. I'm quite sure it's, it's kind of expensive to travel, but, you know, somehow yeah. you, you made it happen, though, man. For real. You're yeah, it, it, even if it's just in the USA, going to other cities in the States, you know, that's, you know, that, that's where you start and then you sort of progress. That's, that's good, man. I like that. Well, thanks for coming to the show, The Blind Traveler. Again, hey, Tony Giles. Thanks a lot, man. Enjoy. Uh, 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 what time uh, is it over in, in, in England right now? Uh, well, I'm actually in Greece because my girlfriend lives there. So it's, we're looking at about 6 p.m. our time. Oh, 6 p.m. Which okay. is about eight hours ahead of you. <laughs> yeah, really. Uh, yeah, it's about uh, almost 10 o'clock a.m. in the morning time. About right 10. Here, right? It's be about ten your time, nine thirty. Yeah, 10. almost ten o'clock. Well, hopefully, whenever yeah. you come, whenever you come back to the, to New Orleans, you, you know, hook me, or hit me yeah, up. Yeah, we'll come. We'll, we'll, have, we'll, have, we'll, have, we'll, have, we'll stay in touch. We'll come to Baton Rouge. Look you okay. up. Okay, no problem. We're not that far from there, so you take yeah. it easy. And thanks That's again just, for coming on. Hey, man. Okay. Take it easy. Bye bye. Dick, boy, I, 